Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconer video. Today's video, uh, we are talking about two falcons, the red-footed falcon and the amur falcon. Now these two species used to be considered uh, subspecies of the same bird, but now they are listed as separate species. Uh, but the video you're going to watch is actually clipped from a much longer video where I talk about all the hobby falcons and the sister lineage, including the red-footed falcon and the amur falcon. So this is taken out, so watch this video under that context. If you would like to see that whole video, I've got a link down below that you can link to and see the entire video. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this short video talking about the Amur Falcon and the Red-Footed Falcon. The next bird we're gonna talk about is the Red-Footed Falcon. The Red-Footed Falcon is one of these extreme migrants. Uh, they live in Southeast Asia, and then they migrate uh, throughout all, uh, all of Africa. Their size, they're pretty small. They weigh 130 to 200 grams. So that's kind of, you know, kestrel to very small Merlin kind of size range. They're not very big and they're very buoyant. But these are part of a sister clade. These guys are not true members of the hobby lineage, but they might be. We don't know. So these guys fit somewhere in between hobbies and kestrels. Hobby falcons, which have gone over in the rest of the video, red-footed falcons, they, they, they're just kind of in between that. So that's why I'm including them, because they form a sister lineage. So these guys migrate. They're, they're really beautiful birds. They hunt insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. They're just kind of an all-around bird. They'll just kind of do whatever. The juveniles are streaked, and then the adults they are sexually dimorphic. The adult males are a, are a very distinct, very beautiful blue-gray with bright red feet. And the adult females have a bluish back and they kind of have a creamy chest. Uh, and again, genetically, these are somewhere between uh, kestrels and hobbies. So they're kind of an interesting bird. Uh, we don't fully know. And again, the more we sequence genomes, the more we can find out where they fit in and when they diverged off. But they don't quite fit into the hobby lineage, but they don't quite fit into kestrels. They're kind of somewhere in between, and that's why they're worth including. Now, they used to be considered a subspecies, one and the same with the next falcon, and now they're a separate species, and that is the Amur falcon. The Amur falcon breeds in Eastern Asia and Northern Mongolia and North Korea. That's where they breed, but they migrate south to Southern Africa. That is a long range, it's like 9,000 miles. These incredible migration routes. These guys are even smaller than red-footed falcons. On average, they're 97 grams to 188 grams. So remember, the red-footed are 130 to 200 grams. So you're, you're, they're, they're a little smaller. They catch insects and birds on the wing. So they don't like to catch things on the ground, they like to catch things on the wing. Um, and they, the, the, they're, they're kind of different. The males are kind of dark in their coloration, uh, talking about a dark blue. And the females are a blue black on the back and they've got a mottled chest where it's a little different. It's similar to the red-footed falcon, but a little bit different and a little more model on the chest. These are known for their mass migrations. These birds mass in, you know, just countless numbers of these birds migrating together at the same time. What's really sad about this is there is no waste in nature and technically we're part of nature. So uh, entrepreneuring humans said, well, hey, there's all these birds migrating through. Let's catch them in mass. And so they'd set out net traps and would catch thousands and thousands and thousands of them to eat for food, uh, for the food market. So they'd catch them alive and they just tie them and the birds are just hanging there. They bring them into market and kill them and cook them up like tiny, tiny little Thanksgiving turkeys. There's not much meat. Um, again, a big female is 188 grams. And a lot of that is feather and bone and guts. So the amount of meat, on, a, a gram is about the weight of a raisin. So if you're, if you're looking at like maybe 50 grams worth of meat tops, 40, 50 grams tops. That's not a lot, but these things were being killed in mass. Uh, it was one of the kind of the good stories. Normally these stories all end up sad. 
this came out publicly. You know, people were just doing this for generations, not nothing of it, and their numbers were starting to plummet. Well, when this was noted, uh, people around the world said, well, hey, whoa, 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 let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's act protection. And so this is a great effort that the countries where this was happening at have said, hey, let's step in and let's make it illegal to kill these birds, but also let's educate the kids and the children and the people. Let's go around to the villages and explain, hey, look, these are these falcons. Please do not trap them. Please do not eat them. Please do not kill them. And it's totally shifted things. So uh, the Amur Falcon is a very recent success story of what we can do to try to kind of help things and uh, get things going better. And that kind of kind of makes me happy to hear. But the Amur Falcon is a very strange one. Uh, again, such ridiculously far migration routes. Uh, we don't know why they do it, but most birds that have wackadoodle white migration routes like that, we know that that migration route started during the Ice Age. And depending on what geologic barriers and what ice sheets were there, they kind of determined where things go. And now it's just a genetic memory to go a certain way. And you still go, even if it transcends logic to travel so far. But that is the Amur Falcon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about these two species. Uh, very unique species, and again, uh, they've dealt with a lot of persecution and a lot of hunting. And fortunately, that is being curtailed through government law and public education, and it's making a difference. But we need to preserve these species and make sure that they're cared for and that they're safe to live their lives. So uh, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. It helps me keep this channel up and going. And as always, happy hawking. Thank you.